There's a tiny circuit that can save the world. It's in your brain. It makes empathy. Now, we desperately need that circuit these days since we're facing enormous challenges that require all of us to work together to solve them. And empathy is what allows us to get along with one another. But just now, when we need it the most, we're actually losing empathy. There's an empathy gap, and people are noticing. Empathy. 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 The best companies can, you know, quickly empathize. That's the essence of empathy. We've always had that segment of society that lacks empathy. Sarah Conrath at Indiana University has done a study showing that American college students have been getting less and less empathetic, with the sharpest drops coming since the year 2000. So how do we fix this? The answer comes from the very latest in neuroscience, and I'll get to that in a bit. But first, what exactly is empathy? Empathy is when you imagine what it might feel like to be in someone else's shoes. This can be really hard to do. Like, for example, right now, I'm in my wife's shoes. And uh, it feels really awful. Gotta switch to sensible pumps. We humans have been empathizing since, well, before we even had shoes. Compared to other animals, we weren't so good at doing things like leaping or having claws. We survived because we had this one superpower. We could imagine what another person might be feeling. This allowed us to work really well in groups, so we could do stuff like farming and hunting and such. Humans are really social creatures, and to live and survive, we believe we need empathy. So it's not enough to have just um, physical survival on your own. For a human, we have to live in groups and we have to cooperate and get along. And so it's important to know when someone feels sad, for example, or is in pain, and empathy helps us to share that person's feelings and to help them. We also think it's really important to share other humans' positive emotions, and positive emotions play an, an, a really important role in social life. They are at the foundation of human relationships. They help us to stay connected to others for years and decades of our lives. And those kinds of relationships are crucial to survival. Not that we're the only animals who have empathy. So do some of the other big-brained creatures, like the great apes, <laughs> along with elephants and whales and, and dolphins. Those other animals have one kind of empathy, emotional empathy. They instinctively put themselves in another dolphin's Flippers. We humans have emotional empathy too, but we also have a second kind of empathy, a kind that lets us use our experiences as well as our instincts so we can better imagine things from someone else's perspective. Empathy can sound like kind of a mushy concept, but no. Empathy isn't mushy, it is hard science. Neuroscientists like Dr. Bruce Miller first discovered the empathy circuit when they were working with patients who had a particular kind of dementia called frontotemporal dementia, or FTD. Many of them lose their empathy. Imagine an illness when the first manifestation of this is that you don't care about your children, your partner, your loved ones. When someone suffers an illness, you don't care. This breaks down everything about our humanness, our human connection. So what connects us to people uh, is suddenly disappearing. When brain scientists like Bruce Miller and his colleague Bill Seeley were studying people with FTD, they noticed that certain parts of their brains had shut down. They looked at where their empathy wasn't, and that showed them where empathy was supposed to be. And that's when they discovered the empathy circuit. Regions in this circuit help us to detect other people's feelings and then produce an emotion in response to those people's emotions. So for example, there's parts of the temporal pole and the amygdala that are really important in helping us to understand other people's experiences and emotions. And these systems project to the interior cingulate cortex that then generates this emotional reaction throughout the body through the autonomic nervous system and the face and that system produces this emotional reaction. A really important structure in the system is the insula, and the insula is a part of the brain that helps us to represent our internal states. So it's not enough to just have the brain produce the emotional reaction, but then our brain has to represent how the body has responded and monitor those internal cues. And once we access those internal feelings, um, we can better uh, gauge our internal states and then act empathically. This is a circuit we never realized existed. This is a circuit that um, has grown as the uh, human uh, species has grown. So how exactly does empathy work? Let's say I'm hanging out with you. You know what, we can use a visual aid here. Can 
you just tilt your chin just yeah like no more And let's say I start to get upset. Now you start to empathize. You pick up on my emotion and you start reflecting it. And not just in your brain. The more you empathize, the more your whole body can get in sync with mine. Facial expression, heartbeat, breathing, posture. Now you go further. You try to comfort me because you're obviously such a cool person and it works. But what if you don't empathize with me? Wow, and I thought you and I were buds. And what if it's not just you and me? What if it's a whole lot of us? Well then, eventually our empathy circuits will actually start to get weaker, and we might become less empathetic to the next person we encounter. We retreat to our own little groups, our family and friends, the people we consider us as opposed to them, and everyone outside of that group becomes the other. The other. Society breaks down. The collective empathy circuit is broken. And we don't know why, but we start to feel off. It's because we're not connecting to our fellow humans. We want to reach out, to empathize. It's in our nature. But our empathy circuits are weak. So we tend to connect less and less, especially with people who are outside of our little group, till we reach a point where, because we're so divided, we have all these terrible problems. And also because we're so divided, we can't work together to solve them. Okay. Now that I've completely bummed you out, here's the good news. We can fix this. We can actually strengthen our empathy circuits. If you're old like me, you probably remember eight minute abs. And just crunch right up. My feet are on the ground. Well, there's a simple exercise you can do every day to strengthen your empathy circuit. You could call it eight minute emps. You know, emps for empathy. I'll work on it. The exercise begins when you realize you're feeling a negative emotion towards someone. Like, let's say you're online at the supermarket and I cut you off. This makes you angry and you realize that's what you're feeling. So now here's what you can do. First, take a deep breath or two. Next, use your imagination to try to figure out why I was so rude to you. Maybe I just found out that my mom needs surgery. Maybe someone was just rude to me. You don't have to guess the right answer. I mean, usually you won't be able to. But just trying to imagine how I'm feeling and why will strengthen your empathy circuit. And when I pick up on your empathic vibes, then I might start building up my own empathy circuit. And then these waves of empathy can start to spread. In a culture or in a society, empathy does emanate out from individuals. Those kinds of feeling states could rapidly be transmitted across people, communities, uh, states, countries. We don't have to love everyone. I mean, you know, we can't. But we can almost always empathize with them. It starts with just a small leap of imagination between you and me. And then it spreads in more little leaps and more till it all adds up to one enormous leap, so powerful that it can solve seemingly insurmountable problems. It seems like it's not just like a cool thing or maybe a fun thing to learn about how your brain generates empathy and what the empathy circuit is, but it actually is an important thing. It's like an important thing as a citizen or as a parent or... It's the most important thing. Wait, say that again? <laughs> it's the most important thing to be empathic. When you see people with frontotemporal dementia, they are alone. They are isolated. And you can imagine a country losing this circuit. They will become isolated. They will become alone. And conversely, you can imagine uh, what happens to a person who cares about others, who connects to other people. Their world gets bigger, richer. So brain science is can help us to save the world. It can help us to save humanity. I think we must unite. There's so many things that threaten humanity that will make things worse if we aren't united, if we don't work together. We can do this. We have to do it. We want to do it. You feel me? I think you do.
empts of steel. Prance your way to empathy. Seven minute empts. 